All right, so dribble.com is actually a great place to get inspiration for projects. This is a dribble by F A uh, by James called FAQ. And you can see it's basically just these cards that you can expand that have questions and answers. So this is what we're going to create based off that dribble. And we're going to use quite a bit of CSS because we're going to use font awesome, but we're not going to just put these these comment icons right in the HTML. We're going to use CSS using the specific Unicode for these fonts or for these icons. And then we're going to position them and then we'll add the JavaScript so that we can close and open each of these tabs to see the answer. Okay, so uh, the CSS will, will probably take up most of our time and then the JavaScript is pretty easy. We just need to toggle the active class basically on the parent node. So that's it. Let's go ahead and get into it. Okay, so we're going to get started on our FAQ project. So I just have my project starter, but I also have a link to the font awesome CDN. So you can, you know, grab this from the repository or from fontawesome.com or from cdnjs.com. And then for the title here, let's say FAQ and then in the body, we're going to have an H1 and say frequently asked questions. And right under the H1, we're going to have a container. Let's call this FAQ-container. And inside here, we're going to have our FAQ divs and whichever ones are showing the answer will have a class of active. OK, so I'm only going to put active on the first one for now, and you can have more than one active at the same time. It's not like the the expanding, um, you know, the expanding tabs that we did or expanding cards, whatever. So in here in the FAQ, we're going to have a title. So H H3 dot. FAQ dash title. Let's say, why shouldn't we trust Adams? And then we're going to have a paragraph with the class of FAQ dash text. And this will basically be the answer. We'll say they make up everything. So these are just like stupid little jokes. Of course, you can change it to whatever you'd like. Then we want our button. Now we're going to have either a Chevron, either a Chevron down button if it's retracted and if it's expanded, we'll have an X button or a times button. So let's do an I tag here. So FAS font awesome FA dash Chevron dash down. And under that, we're going to have an FA dash times, which is an X. Okay, so if I save this, it's going to look like that. Now we're going to have three more of these well four total. So I'm just going to paste these in. I'm going to go still within the container, but right under the first FAQ here and paste these in and save. And now you can see we just have actually we have five total. OK, so I mean, you can grab these if you don't want to just copy them from here, you can grab them from the final repository. All right. But basically, they're just an FAQ with a title text and the two buttons. So now let's jump into the style sheet. And uh, as far as the font goes, I'm going to use the Mully font. So I'm going to say CSS question mark family and set that equal to MULI. And then let's in the body set that font. And we could do this like display flex to center it and all that, but I'm going to just center it directly on the container. So I'm just going to add a background color here of F0 three times, which is light gray. And then for the H1, let's set a margin. Uh, we'll do 50 pixels top zero and then 30 pixels. And I want to text align that to the center. And then let's center the container. So remember, we have FAQ dash container. And for that, let's set a max width of 600 pixels. And to keep it in the middle, because right now you can see it's stuck to the edge. We want to keep it in the middle. So we'll set a margin zero for top and bottom and auto on the left and right, which is going to keep it in the middle of that 600 pixels. All right. So for each FAQ, we want to add some styles. So let's add a background 
color of transparent. Basically, the active one is going to have a white background, but the ones that aren't active are going to be transparent. And let's set the border to one pixel solid. And for the color, we're going to use nine F a for a eight gives it a border. I'm also going to add a border radius of 10 pixels, make the corners a little rounded. Margin, let's do 20 pixels on the top and bottom, zero on the left and right. That'll separate them out. Then for padding, oops, for a padding, let's do 30 pixels all the way around. And I'm going to position this relative so that we can position stuff absolute within the FAQ. Uh, and let's add an overflow of hidden so that nothing comes out of the container. Also, we want a smooth transition when we open and close or expand and collapse. So let's add a transition and we'll just do 0.3 seconds ease. So basically anything that's that that can transition will in this amount of time. Now for the FAQ that's active, let's say FAQ, if it has a class of active, then I want to set a background color of white. And the first one is active, so it's background color of white. I also want to give it a background icon or actually two background icons positioned in a certain way. Now we know how to put font awesome icons in directly in the HTML with specific classes. We can also insert them with CSS. So if you've never done this before, if we go to font awesome dot com and we search for an icon, I want comment. And let's check out this right on uh, actually this this one right here comment. So if you notice it, it gives you the class so we can directly insert it in the HTML. But we also get this Unicode value of F 075. Every icon has a different value. <clears throat> so we can actually use this to insert an icon using CSS. So I want to have actually two of these comment icons as a background here on active. Um, oh, one thing I did forget is the box shadow, which I'm just going to paste in. So it's just two shadows with zero on the eight horizontal offset, three on the vertical, six blur. And then this is the color and then a second shadow. So just so it looks like it's coming off the page a little bit. Uh, but back to the to the icons where I'm going to add the CSS for this is on the before and after pseudo selector for FAQ active. So if I just say colon colon before I can pass in a content value here and I could put anything I want like hello. So before this FAQ active, you can see it's inserting hello. I can also use after. So I'm going to also say FAQ active after and now you can see hello after it. Now, instead of using text here for content, we're going to put in that Unicode character. Now, when you use font awesome like this and you put in the Unicode, you want to use a backslash and then whatever the code is, which in our case is F 075. Now, if I just save that, we're just going to see this square because we need to include the font family for font awesome, which is actually going to be font space awesome space five space free. And now if I save that, you can see that I've inserted those two icons. Now we obviously want to style this. Let's go ahead and add a color here of hexadecimal two E C C seven one. Okay, so gives it that green color. Let's set the font size and let's set that to seven rem units, which makes it much bigger. Um, so it's basically seven times whatever the root HTML element font size is, um, which initially is 16 pixels. So in addition to that, we want to position. Oops, what the heck is that? <laughs> we want to position absolute. And let's set I don't want them to be so dark. So let's set the opacity here to we'll do 0.2. That's going to make them much lighter. And for the position, let's say from the top, we'll do 20 pixels. Remember, this is for both before and after. So 
what we're doing now is positioning positioning them both in the same place but then we'll grab one of them and move it a little bit so top 20 pixels left 20 pixels and if i save that it looks like there's only one but they're actually both just in the same exact position and i want to set a z index of zero so that we make sure that that it's behind everything else now like i said they're both in the same position so what i'll do is take the one that's before so i'm just going to grab this class or this selector and i'm going to change the color of it to let's do three four nine eight db so I'll give it a blue color and then let's set the position top so remember it's already positioned absolute right here so we don't have to add that here but we want to change these coordinates so from the top let's say negative 10 pixels so it's going to move it up negative 10 pixels from you know from the initial zero um, and then left let's do negative 30 pixels so now i'll save that and you can see that that's been moved another thing that i want to do is rotate it because right now the the little point is over here off the screen i want to basically turn it around so we can use transform translate for that so let's say uh, transform and it's not translate i'm sorry rotate because we want to rotate this on the y axis so it's going to be rotate y and let's rotate it halfway so 180 degrees and now if i save you can see that this blue one has been rotated now we could have just as well used the comments icon this one right here which looks very similar and we could have just just done before and added it but this makes it a little more interesting using this using uh, you know multiple icons and just positioning them differently so you could do whatever you want as a background here or in anything that you create so now what I want to do is the title and the text here. So let's go down here and let's say FA dash title or FAQ, sorry. Uh, and for the title, all I want to do is add margin, let's say zero top 35, uh, 35 right, zero bottom, zero left. And for the text, say FAQ dash text. So for this, we're going to I'm just going to add a margin here of 30 pixels, zero, zero. But I, I don't want this to show unless it's unless it has the active class. So let's initially set this to display none. And now we can't see any of the text, any of the answers. However, if it's active, so FAQ active and FAQ dash text, then we want to display as block so now we can only see the answer for the one that is active okay if i were to add active on another one like this one here if i add that class of active that's going to give it all those properties and it's going to show the question i'm sorry the answer as well now i'm going to stop here and in the next video we're going to handle these buttons because we only want the X to show if it's active. We only want the Chevron to show if it's not. We also need to style them. And then we'll add the little bit of JavaScript to be able to click and expand each FAQ. All right, so now we want to style these buttons, these icon buttons, position them. Uh, we want to give functionality to them so we can expand and contract these FAQs. So we have a class of FAQ dash toggle on the button. And obviously we don't want to show the Chevron if it's expanded and we don't want to show the X if it's if it's not expanded. So we're going to have to deal with that. But let's just do some basic stuff here first, like the background color. I'm going to set to transparent and take away the border, set that to zero and let's set the cursor to a pointer. Let's set uh, I'm actually going to display flex here and then align and justify to the center. So align items center and justify content center. And then let's increase the font size. So we'll increase that, let's say 16 pixels. Uh, and then we're gonna set padding to zero. Let's set the position to be absolute. 
And then as far as where we want to put these, the initial toggle is going to be top 30 pixels. So 30 pixels from the top is going to be on the right. So let's do 30 pixels from the right. And then the height will be 30 pixels and the width will be 30 pixels. So if I save that, now you can see these buttons over here. Uh, as far as this first one, I forgot to put the class on that. So that should be class FAQ dash toggle. All right. So I'm going to set the X right here, the times to display none. So FAQ dash toggle, which is the button and then not dot. This should be dash. So FAQ dash toggle and then the class of FA dash times, which is the X icon. I'm going to set that to display none. So now we only see the Chevron. Now, if it's active, we do want to see the times. So let's just copy this. And here we're going to say let's put active in front. So FAQ uh, FAQ dot active and then times and then let's display block. So now you can see that this is the X is showing on the active. Now we want to remove the Chevron if it's active. So let's take this and let's set FA active. So toggle and then we want Chevron dash down and we want to display none there. So now we only see the Chevron. If it's not active, we see the X if it is. Uh, another thing I want to do is get rid of the see this outline here. So that's going to be on FAQ dash toggle, which is the button we want to say in its focus state. We want the outline property to be set to zero. OK, that'll get rid of that. Also on the active toggle. Let's grab this here. So on the active toggle, I'm going to set a background color of hexadecimal value 9 FA 4 A8. So you can see the X has that um, that background. I want that to be uh, rounded or circular. So I'm going to add on the FA toggle a border radius of 50 percent. And then I also want to make the text or the icon white uh, if it's on if it's the times. So right here, let's say color white. All right. So now we want to make this function. But what I'd like you to do is pause the video and try this yourself. If you don't need, need any hints at all, then go ahead and pause it now and try it. If you want some hints, I'm going to just paste this in for a second. So you want to bring in your toggle buttons. Remember, they have a class of FAQ dash toggle and you want to use query selector all because it's more than one. So that will create a node list. You want to loop through that node list using for each and then on each toggle, you want to add an event listener, a click event listener because we're clicking on them. And then you want to toggle the active class on the parent node. You don't want to add the active class to this to toggle. You want to add it on the parent, which is this div here. OK, and you can use dot parent node to access that and then to toggle a specific class. You can do class list dot toggle and pass that in. So this should give you enough information to to really know how to do this. So if you want to pause it and go ahead and try it, do that and then come back. So I'm going to bring in my toggles. So I'll set toggles to document dot and we want to use query selector all. And they have a class of FAQ dash toggle. And then I'm going to take that node list and I'm going to loop through with for each. So I'll say for each toggle. I want to take that specific toggle and add an event listener onto it. I want to listen for a click event. And when that happens, I'm going to run a function and take the toggle which is the button and I want to access the parent node. So we can say dot parent node and I want to access the class list 
and then call the not remove. We want to call the toggle method and we want to toggle the active class. And that's it. So very, very simple. So if we go over here and I click on that, it's going to take away the active class. If I click it again, it's going to put it back so I can toggle that this and I can open them all if I want. It doesn't have to be, you know, one by one or whatever. We can open as many as we want. Okay, and that's it. And this is something that back when I was learning how to do this stuff, you would use jQuery for most likely um, because JavaScript just wasn't where it is today. Query selector all didn't even exist. Um, it was just it was a, it was a lot of extra code just to do something simple. So, I mean, if you're learning JavaScript now, it's it's much better than it was back in the day um, when you had to use jQuery for the smallest little just activity in the DOM. But that's it. Hopefully you guys enjoyed this. I will see you in the next project.